I have a song I love to sing since I have been redeemed of my Redeemer, Savior, King, since I have been redeemed. Good morning and welcome back to Bible Talks. I'm Chris Kramer with the Northside Church of Christ in Russellville, Kentucky. We bring the Bible Talks to you every Saturday morning at 9.05 on WRUS, that's 6.10 a.m., or uh, I think it's 104.9 FM. But you can also see it on WRUSradio.com, and uh, you can find a backlog of their um, 9 o'clock programs. So if you missed this one or would like to go back and re, uh, re-listen to it, it'll be in podcast form on their website. But we also have a video version that you can find on our YouTube channel. So if you just do a Google search, and look up Northside Church of Christ, Russellville, Kentucky. Just type it all in, and our website will pop up. It has links to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. And, of course, you can contact us through any of those social means. Um, if you would, though, if you have any questions, uh, biblically, of course, and especially about your spiritual state, please uh, contact us through email. That's really the easiest way to contact us at Northside Church of Christ at hotmail.com. Sometimes we don't always see the other messages that are floating around uh, various social media. So we appreciate you contacting us in that regard. We'll do our best to get back with you. And let's talk about your spiritual needs in regard to your relationship with God, which means uh, we'd like to set up a study with you. Let's talk about the Bible. Uh, Let's sit down. Let's sit across the table from each other and uh, open up God's word and uh, have a good heart to heart discussion about what God would have us do. So we appreciate you listening to Bible Talks. We are continuing our studies throughout the Old Testament. We're almost at the end of the year. We have, uh, including today, three Saturdays left in the year, and we have three more books of the Old Testament to cover. So if you'll get your Bibles dusted off and turn to the book of Haggai, we're going to be discussing that in just a minute. Uh, But first, uh, we'd like to welcome back my good friend and yours, Nick Greenman from the Christian Home Congregation over in Morgantown. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Chris, and good morning, Bible students. It is good to be with you all again today, and uh, sorry for missing out uh, with you guys the last couple of weeks, uh, but uh, I'm glad to be back and jump back into this uh, uh, study of the Old Testament, and we're going to be looking at Haggai, as you said just a moment ago. Uh, We'll be looking at this prophet and and how he encouraged the people to get back to work, and of course, uh, there are going to be some really cool modern-day applications to that mentality. Uh, So, but Let me introduce myself and where I preach, and for anybody in the Butler County area, you are most welcome to come on out to Christian Home Church of Christ. We meet at 3628 uh, Lovely Road, and I almost forgot my address at that church (laughs) building. (laughs) 3628 Lovely Road, uh, Highway 411 there in uh, the Jetson area of Butler County, so we're on the uh, northeast side of the county. We have service times at 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. We meet at five o'clock Sunday evenings for worship. And so many opportunities on the Lord's day to come and join us. And we encourage you to do so. And then midweek Bible studies, Wednesdays at seven. Uh, We are still working through in our Bible class, the book of Psalms, and we are uh, working away, uh, trudging along. And this Sunday, we're going to continue our study on the imprecatory Psalms, which are the Psalms of curses. And so it's an interesting study. If you're wanting to learn more about that, well, then come and check us out. And uh, so let's get into Haggai, Chris. I'm excited about it. Yeah. Well, you know, first I'll say I, I don't have to remember our address because uh, if you know where Kentucky Fried Chicken is, uh, then you know where we are because we are right next door. So we uh, want to encourage you to worship with us every Sunday morning at nine o'clock and Wednesday evenings at seven o'clock. And our address is actually 689 North Main Street. So that's in Russellville. So we, there's churches in Russellville, Morgantown. If you're in the Bowling Green area, we'll you know contact us. We'll set you up with some brethren in that area and anywhere in between. So wherever you might be listening to our program, we can find some churches for you to go and worship Indeed. with and study God's word. As we look at the book of Haggai, and you made a comment just a moment ago, Nick, that uh, I really wanted to focus on. And I always kind of like to leave the historical things to you because you have a good mind. Uh, for connecting so many of these these books and these writings to history. I know you're a history buff in general, and uh, you know that knowledge and interest has served you well in understanding a little bit more as to time periods, where Haggai falls in the timeline of God's people and the exile from Babylon. 
Um, and uh, Haggai overall, as you said, applies to us today from a uh, example standpoint. You know, this is, if I were to give a, a theme or a title to Haggai, I might call it a time for priorities. Um, and, and we see it especially around these holiday seasons and things like this, where, you know, we tend to put a lot of priorities in things and, um, and you know, in family and, and places that we go, which God is not condemning having things. He's not condemning having a home. He's not condemning, obviously, providing for our families as is commanded us in Scripture. But he is rebuking the fact that men are not putting God first. So we have to remember that, that uh, putting God first doesn't mean that we necessarily have less. It doesn't necessarily mean that we aren't taken care of and that we have to make a vow of poverty or something like that. Uh, there are some religions and people that actually believe that kind of thing in, in Scripture. Uh, but to put God first means that, well, let's just look at the basic things in life. Uh, we give of our means each week, as the Bible commands us to do, uh, when we come together as a church and we give to God and that money is to be used for the purpose of spreading his gospel. And we could talk more about that in another program, but what I'm getting at here is in your budget for the week, what's the first thing that you budget for? Is it food? Is it gas? Is it your car payment, your house payment? Uh, may I suggest to you that you put God at the top of that list and budget yourself to give unto the Lord first. This is the example and the precedent that we see all through Scripture. We see it with the building of the wall uh, back in Nehemiah's day. We see it with uh, purpose of heart that people had when they came and brought items for the construction of the tabernacle uh, back in Moses' day. And they had a heart to work. They were willing to work, and they brought more than what was needed uh, to where they actually had to stop the people and say, we don't need any more. But now we've gotten into such a relaxed state of God's people. After they've spent this past generation in bondage, they have been promised to come home, come home to Jerusalem, come home to the place of worship, come home to the place that remember Daniel opened his door, opened the windows and he faced Jerusalem to pray to God three times a day. That's where they wanted God to be in that temple and in that place. And if you remember in Ezekiel's day, you know, one of the images that Ezekiel saw was a, uh, a great throne uh, that came facing away from Jerusalem. And I think there's a lot of significant things there that God had left that place because the people were not following his will. But now they're home. Now some years have passed. Why hasn't the temple been rebuilt? Why haven't they been putting more of their efforts in putting God first and finishing the work that they were supposed to be doing? And that's where we pick up with Haggai's prophecies toward them, his rebuke uh, toward them. And of course, let's not forget that there will be a hope for a redemption. There'll be hope for a greater temple, the temple of the heart, the temple of the glory of God, that the temple within is much grander than the temple without. So, Nick, um, where would you like to start us off with? Well, I appreciate the uh, confidence you have in me for knowing history. Uh, those were very kind words. And and uh, I'm not the history buff that you probably think I am, but I do enjoy history quite a bit. I do like tying in these things together. And uh, for the longest time, uh, I, had a, I struggled trying to connect the dots through the Bible because as you read from Genesis through the Revelation, it can be kind of confusing and disjointed. And it wasn't until I finally started studying the historical backdrop that everything just started to fit in place. The way it was for me, other people might might find other other keys to to get it all to play out in their head correctly. But for me, it was history. And, and so, yeah, I do take a, a lot of joy in studying and searching out that historical backdrop so that I can appreciate the the political uh context uh, going into some of this um and so if if there's any listeners out there uh you know chris and i sure would love to have a comment from you on our uh, videos or facebook you know what was what was it about uh you know what was it for you that helped you unlock some of those things about the bible and so for me the historical backdrop is key and and one of the coolest features that we see is that this period is well recorded in our Bibles for us, whereas historically the Persian Empire was one of the longest running ancient empires 
we have very little to go off of, historically speaking. What a lot of it we get is from the Greek empire, and of course, that's going to be biased. Uh, but in the scriptures, we do have some very interesting uh, windows to see that, that time period. And if we go back to Second Chronicles, the last few verses of that book, it says in verse 22, it says, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he sent a proclamation throughout the kingdom and also put it in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has appointed me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever there is among you of all his people, may the Lord his God be with him and let him go up. And so that's the proclamation from the king of Persia, Cyrus. He sends the, he allows the Jews to go back home to, to the land of Canaan. The 70 years in Babylonian captivity is over. There is relief there. There's deliverance from God. And now they are being ruled by an empire that seems to be very hospitable mm -hmm. uh, to, to their religion and their way of life. And so they go back. And yet, mm -hmm. what did Chris say a minute ago? They didn't build the temple. They start it, and then yeah. they have some trouble. Let me, uh, uh, let me uh, interject something here. You know, we had some similar discussions when we talked about Esther and the mm -hmm. time period and uh, how she became a queen of a particular province. And, you know, that not everybody went back to Jerusalem. Um, not everybody, you know, chose whatever. And we're not questioning their faith or anything like that. It's just those that went back to Jerusalem went back to some very dire circumstances. Right. And, uh, you know, we remember in our previous studies how the town was laid waste and mm -hmm. it took a lot to rebuild it, certainly. But we have to remember that when we put God first in all that we do, that, um, you know, God will help us do everything else. He'll help us take care of the, you know, our homes and the things like that. I mean, we need to have the attitude of David in some ways, because David looked around his house and said, here I built, here I live in a house you know, paneled with wood and what does God have? And he took it upon himself to build a temple, which God said, no, I, I didn't ask you to build a temple. I'll let your son do it. And of course, you know, we see the history of that, but in this first chapter in particular, you know, he says to them, you know, you, you don't seem to have a problem providing for yourself, but at mm. the same time, because you have not put me first, here you are scrounging and scraping. You're doing all this work, but you're not really getting ahead. Are you? You know, you, you, uh, you know, you so much, but you bring in little, you, know, you see that in the first chapter in, in verse six in particular. And what you find is that it's never really enough, but the key, the key really is, you know, found in verse two. And when he says, thus speaks the Lord of hosts saying, this people says the time has not come the time that the Lord's house should be built. <laughs> Who are we to say that? For a long time. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so, let's get back to your comments. Yeah, there. You, you, you got the you know Cyrus sends them sends them back to begin building the the temple. Uh, Cyrus comes and goes. His sons Cambyses comes and goes, and then you finally have this king called Darius. And so Darius uh, is ruling as over Persia, and and then of course uh, it's during his days that God sends the prophets Haggai and Zechariah to the to his people, saying, "Hey." straighten up and get to build in my temple As and in the chapter Darius in uh, the book of Daniel it's a different one uh, so okay. Darius in the book of Daniel is called the Mede and mm -hmm. so he he would be a commanding general uh, for uh, for Cyrus uh, that comes in and he ends up ruling over Babylon like a like a governor kind of position uh, he is not to be confused with Darius the emperor okay. uh, I want to make sure uh, that that was clear in regard yeah. to where we are in the timeline and history Right. Now, if somebody knows better than I do, then let me know. Uh, but uh, that's, that's as far as what I've studied, that's what I've been able to determine. But in chapter five of Ezra, we see Haggai and Zechariah both being mentioned here. And in Ezra chapter five, verse one, it says, when the prophets Haggai, uh, the prophet and Zechariah, the son of Edu, prophesied to the, to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, who was over them. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, the son of jo Josedek, arose and began to rebuild the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, supporting them. And, of course, that building gets completed, uh, and, and it's, it's an opportunity for rejoicing. And so we get the privilege of reading what these prophets said and, and what was 
said that convinced the Jews, uh, Zerubbabel and Joshua, the high priest specifically, to be motivated to get involved in the work of God. And, and you'll see those names dropped in, in both of these books, in Zechariah and, and Haggai. At the very end of Haggai, you've got uh, Zerubbabel being mentioned as, as the signet ring. Um, it says there in verse 23 of chapter 2, On that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will take you, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shealtiel, declares the Lord, and make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, declares the Lord of hosts. And then, of course, Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, is mentioned in Zechariah chapter 3, and also in chapter 6, very important prophecies. Uh, and, and so this is a really interesting thing. And, and of course, what's even uh, cooler is that both of these prophets, uh, Haggai and Zechariah, are setting the stage up to move the people to build the temple in that day and age, but they are setting up some key messianic prophecies for when Jesus comes later. And so uh, we need to really dive deeply as, as Bible students. And of course, the goal of our program is not to dive that deeply, uh, but to encourage you to dive deeper in your own personal study. Dive into Haggai, dive into Zechariah, and learn to appreciate, uh, you know, the historical uh, significance, but also the prophet, uh, the prophet, the prophetic, <laughs> if I can learn to speak, uh, the prophetic, uh, uh, you know, messianic prophecies there for the coming of the Christ. And so it, it's right. it's very important, uh, these two books, especially uh, for us Christians in the New Testament age. Yeah, there's a lot of emphasis placed upon, you know, purity. And, um, you know, those are very reminiscent of what we have through Jesus Christ today. And, um, you know, we, we haven't actually said this, but it's obvious. We're just talking about two chapters here. A very mm -hmm. quick read. We could have spent the time in the study reading it. But like you said, our purpose of this program is to give you an overview to encourage you to go and read for yourself. But listen to what Nick is saying, because when you go back to Ezra and you see the history uh, of God's people through Second Chronicles and so on, you can see where Haggai was. You can learn more about God's purpose for his people. So when Haggai comes along and says these things, none of this should be a surprise. Uh, we are talking about a post exilic time period. In other words, we've already been through the devastation upon the people. They've learned their lesson. They've received their punishment. And, and now's not a time for punishment. Now's a time to, for rejoicing. Now's a time to, to get it back. But they're keeping themselves in a certain type of bondage, you might say. And they haven't purified themselves in the sight of God. And they're not taking advantage of the very thing that God had intended for his people. And that was to rebuild, rebuild them as a people. But like we've seen, and, and like we said, not so much necessarily as a physical people and a physical nation, they will always be under the rule of another nation, well into the time of Christ, when they're under Roman rule and so on. So even today, um, and I'm not going to open a can of worms here, but well, I probably will, but we don't have time to discuss the fact that people today are still waiting for Israel to be restored as a nation and you know, physically. But that wasn't what God is saying here. That wasn't what his intention was. And so he's promising to them a nation of godly people. And of course, we know that is the kingdom of God, which is his church, which Jesus Christ uh, literally sits on the throne of that kingdom today. That is uh, the throne God established through the kingdom of David and so on and so forth. We have all that because of these, these people. We have all that because of their, their faith in God. And so we learn from these examples. We learn from their mistakes. We learn from their disheartened attitude. And we're going to see it again in Zechariah. We'll see it again, especially in Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, that leads us into really the state of the people when we get to Jesus' day. And it's just so enlightening. So, yeah, you got to learn a little bit more. Uh, and But, you know, take Haggai's words for what they are. Don't we don't add to or take away, uh, but but learn more of who he was. Mm -hmm. One of the cool uh, forward looking uh, texts is there in chapter two, mm -hmm. where it says there in verse six, for thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once more in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Uh, he was talking about, you know, the glory that is to come. Uh Verse 9 says, the latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. 
And in this place, I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. A lot of people look at that as still a future expectation. Mm -hmm. But when you go to Hebrews chapter 12, when he, uh, when the Hebrew writer is quoting this passage, we know that the, he's talking about the, the age of the church. Uh, we are that we are in that time period now. We are where the latter glory of this house is greater than the former. The church is the temple of God. Yeah. We are, uh, you know, as you know, as we are being built together as a spiritual house, able to offer, offer up spiritual sacrifices as a holy priesthood. Uh, you know, we are uh, showing a greater glory than a physical building because right. we are that spiritual building uh, through Jesus Christ, and so. That's one of my favorite parts about uh, Haggai is seeing some of that uh, language and where it can be kind of mysterious when we read it just in Haggai alone. But it makes a whole lot of sense when we begin to connect the dots, especially through Hebrews chapter 12, verses 25 through 29. Uh, and so that's one of my favorite things about Haggai as we're taking a look there. Uh, and then, of course, as we get into Zechariah next week, Lord willing, Wow, we're going to get a rich, rich, uh, yeah. you know, deluge of uh, prophetic writing and apocalyptic literature, very similar and reminiscent of what we'll see in the book of Revelation. And so a great building block for us to appreciate some of this language and, and help us build a context of when to apply uh, some of these uh, illustration symbols that we will see not only in Zechariah, but maybe Ezekiel, uh, Daniel. And also, and especially in the book of Revelation. Excellent points. And of course, we're out of time for our program today. But what we haven't covered in Haggai, uh, of course, go back and, and, uh, and you know, study it for yourself. But like uh, Nick said, when we look in Zechariah and we see a little bit more of a fleshing out of these things, um, you know, Haggai kind of reminds me like when you go to the book of Jude, uh, it's just really one chapter, but uh, just the quick nature in which he wants to get in there and just, you know, start the ball rolling and really encourage the people with the quick message of this is what needs to be done and needs to be done now. Uh, these shorter books always remind me more of uh, writings of desperation and desperate times. Uh, you may think that we as gospel preachers, we preach with desperate times, you know, at the end of every sermon, we're encouraging people to, you know, get their spiritual life straightened up with God. We feel that it is a desperate call uh, to make things right with God today because you and I don't know if we have tomorrow. What's interesting about the people this time period is they were counting on a tomorrow. You know, God said, I'm not going to do anything unless I tell one of my prophets first. And so what they have going for them is a future, is a hope. Our future is a home in heaven. Now we hasten that. We want that to come. But the fact is, is that we don't know when. So we need to be ready now. And God has been patient with these people for what, a 16 year period, starting and stopping, using excuses, people coming and opposing, you know, from the moment the temple was being built, the people in the surrounding areas were coming and they, they wanted to be a part of it when they couldn't be a part of it. They're like, well, you know, we're going to, we're going to cause problems. You know, we're going to, we're going to hold up your supply lines. We're going to write to the King. We're going to, and, and people get discouraged. We understand that, but you don't need to let people discourage you from serving God. His will will be done. And so put that first and foremost in your efforts of your spiritual life. Nick, thanks for your insights this morning. And um, thank you all listening audience for listening to this program. And we hope that you'll dive a little bit deeper into the studies of Haggai. Read up for yourselves, Zechariah this week it's a little longer obviously we won't be able to read everything what is it uh, seven chapters or or so no it's uh, like 13 14 chapters oh i'm confusing myself with something else okay here we are 14 chapters in the book of zechariah and uh so you can read that in in the week to come uh read two chapters a day the next seven days and uh, you'll be all ready to talk about Zechariah next Saturday. Thank you for listening to Bible Talks today. And if there's um, uh, anything that we can do for you spiritually, please contact us. Northside Church of Christ meets in Russellville, Kentucky. Just do a Google search on your computers or uh, just check around town. You can find us. We'll uh, see you Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. And until then, 
Have a good day. Have a good rest of your week. And we'll see you next time on Bible Talks. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name.